Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday, August 22nd. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Atlantic and the big story, obviously, Invest 96L. Uh, moving here into the Greater Antilles now, if we zoom in on this, here's the storm, still very large envelope of convection and moisture here, and still really just a sharp wave axis, no really defined center. We did have a vorticity maximum up here to the north and northeast of the Lesser Antilles that just booked it uh, north of Puerto Rico last night and this morning, moving very quickly. And uh, again, the northern side of these waves that are spread out usually ends up winning. And you can see that it has now rotated in, moving nearly due west, uh, probably somewhere in here. And then there's baggage to the south, which is still kind of weighing the system down. It does still have meat down here. And if we look at the uh, aircraft observations, the plane that's flying in there right now, the closest thing to a center that we've seen all day is right here. You can see the wind shifted from east-northeast to south or south-southwest. So there may have been a little bit of a spin or verticity maximum right here off the tip of the Dominican Republic. And then you see more southeasterly winds to the south. Uh, so the story is that there may be kind of a center in here, but this is still a really spread out, amplified tropical wave, bringing uh, needed rains to the islands here, potentially too much rain to the tall mountains in Hispaniola. But these large waves, uh, in my experience, take a long time to get going, especially when they have to deal with Hispaniola. And this is really the wild card, both for intensity and track, uh, because if Hispaniola can weigh these waves down, sometimes it kind of traps the waves in here, makes them dance along the northern edge of the coastline, and then finally ejects them into the Bahamas uh, toward the northwest. And how this wave plays with Hispaniola is extremely important to where it ultimately goes. Right now we've had the models continuing the shift really out to sea with this, showing the main models uh, showing a track off to the north, east of the United States. You can see some of them even, this, these are all the GFDL tracks, by the way, bending back toward uh, the eastern seaboard, Maryland, New Jersey, those coastlines. This, um, this particular solution, I mean, we'll have to see. It doesn't seem particularly likely to me. If it's going to go out, I think it does go out uh, legitly to the northeast, probably avoiding everybody except potentially Bermuda but we're still too far out to worry about that. Um, but you still see some of these tracks sniffing out the left-hand track. And like I, like I said a couple of days ago, none of the doors are truly closed yet on this system. Obviously, the track through the Caribbean south of Cuba into the Gulf is already long gone because the system is up here near Haiti, but or the Dominican, Dominican Republic, sorry. But Hispaniola here, this is, a, this is a big wild card because the models are picking one point where it thinks the system is, and the system doesn't have yet a truly focused center. It doesn't even have to be a storm, but it has to have a well-defined circulation about a point. And until it has that, you can never truly know where the system might end up consolidating, especially when it's large. I mean, this, this is large area convection. You could have the center reform just about anywhere in this convective mass, and suddenly you have a storm in a new location than you thought you were going to have. So the next 24 to 48 hours are crucial because of these mountains here, how it drags us around. It could slow the system down. The system will probably be slowing down. And uh, the system can easily reform near the coastline back out over the water while the rest of it dies over the mountains. There's a lot of things that can happen. And frankly, the models cannot handle Hispaniola, and neither can humans. So we really need to observe this. I cannot intelligently say how Hispaniola will affect this, except to say that these large waves that deal with Hispaniola generally do not explode on the other side in the Bahamas. They take their time forming. We may very well get this named Cristobal and become a tropical storm. Uh, but as far as bombing out into a major hurricane in two days, it's something that we don't usually see with these kinds of systems. Not to rule it out, because obviously uh, in the tropics in August, a lot of things can happen that you don't necessarily expect. But these types of systems generally take their sweet time developing once they clear Hispaniola. Now here's the GFS 500 millibar out to nearly three days from now, and we see uh, 96L at the 500 millibar mid-levels of the atmosphere. You can see that reflection here in the orange and yellow. Here's this trough that is dipping down, stuck because of the block over Hudson Bay, which is not shown on this map. And you can see it digging down and trying to lift this out to the northeast. Now on the GFS, it does lift out because it gets far enough north here. You see it's north of the Bahamas. The Bahamas are here. It gets northeast of the Bahamas and follows this flow, this opening in the ridge right out along the trough northeast. Um, out to sea, uh, pretty close to Bermuda though. 
And now compare that to the Canadian. The same general thing, right? You still got the trough here, but notice the difference in the location of the system. The Canadian is southwest of the Bahamas now, not northeast where the GFS is. And this is only a difference of about 100 miles. But believe it or not, in a situation like this, a difference of 50, 100 miles, 150 miles can be huge because situations like this are like a ball sitting on top of a hill. It can easily roll on one side of the hill or the other side of the hill depending on the tiniest of pushes on the ball. And that's exactly what this is when you have a trough coming down but the system is down near the tail of the trough and you have a ridge to the west pushing east and pushing the trough out. So sometimes it follows the trough out, other times the trough leaves it behind, the ridge builds over the top, traps the system and forces it back toward the west. And uh, we saw that acutely with Tropical Storm Debbie in 2012 where some of the models had it northeast, some had it west, eventually it went to the northeast. Uh, and that's what we kind of have with 96L here. Most of the models favor out to sea, but I don't think the door is closed on getting trapped by this ridge up here yet. And uh, until it gets really by Hispaniola and we see where it is in relation to the Bahamas, whether it's here or here, in a couple of days, we won't really know for sure. So there's still a lot of unknowns. But I do want to point out that if we do see a left turn and the ridge does catch this, notice where this ridge is. By day three, you see it over the southeast US and notice how far it extends its influence out over the Gulf of Mexico. And so if this trough lifts out, leaves this behind, where is it going to go? Is it going to sneak up the coast like David and uh, scrape Florida and move up into the Carolinas? I think unlikely because you see this ridge, it's placed right here, it's a big H, big high. Um, it's blocking the movement of low pressure systems. You can't just jam this up toward the center of the high. Instead, you have to go around the high. And when the, the flow around the high is like this, you're gonna have to see a pretty sharp left turn from this system if it gets left behind the way the Canadian shows. And the Canadian does show it uh, really taking a left hook through the Florida Straits and then coming up into the East Gulf Coast later. And the UK Met shows the same thing. Uh, you see the 12Z, uh, kind of hard to see on this map, but uh, here's the vorticity maximum. Actually over Cuba, you can see it, it really cuts into Cuba. And uh, this is the kind of situation we had with Hurricane Ike in 2008, where the left turn was so much more abrupt, it actually moved south of west um, in 2008. And that wasn't expected at the time because sometimes these ridges are underestimated when they're sitting here like this. I mean, they're beasts. Uh, the tropical cyclone cannot just move into them. So sometimes it has to turn really sharply. And uh, so if this does uh, get left behind, uh, we may not see what some of the models were showing the other day, a track toward the Northwest. Instead, we may see more due West before eventually recurving down the line. But again, this is, um, some speculation if the storm gets left behind, which is far from guaranteed. Just pointing out that the door toward the United States is not fully closed. Most of the models um, show this storm following the trough out, um, but there are questions that remain, and Hispaniola is a huge wild card. So until the system gets into the Southeast Bahamas, I don't think we will know for sure whether this is actually a guaranteed recurvature east of the United States. So uh, continue to keep an eye on it if you're in the southeast US. Um, perhaps not that big of a circle, but uh, just keep a wary eye on the tropics. Always worth watching when there's a system nearby that isn't guaranteed to leave you alone. The Caribbean islands getting the immediate impacts of rain, perhaps flooding rain for Hispaniola over the next couple of days with this large wave. And uh, we shall see what happens during the next couple of days. It will be interesting. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.